A very good evening everybody and welcome to our Celtic Spirituality Reflection from St Michael at the Northgate Church in Oxford. Hope your week has gone well. We travel together, mindful of the enfolding love of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people, both now and for evermore. Our prayer is the Collect for last Sunday morning, the 25th Sunday after Trinity, the last Sunday before Advent. Stir up, we beseech thee, O Lord, the wills of thy faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may of thee be plenteously rewarded. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A wonderful prayer and well known through the last couple of centuries because it was often used as the signal that this was the day that we would begin to stir up the Christmas pudding and to prepare that to, to wait the necessary number of weeks. But the whole concept of being stirred up isn't always a comfortable one, so it's quite a challenging prayer to be saying. May the Lord give us grace that indeed we would be willing to be stirred up and we note that it's the wills of his faithful people so not just our emotions but our wills our obedience and may he give us grace that we may be obedient people as we enter the great season of advent the words of our creed taken from words used on the island of iona we believe in God above us, maker and sustainer of all life, of sun and moon, of water and earth, of male and female. We believe in God beside us, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, born of a woman, servant of the poor, tortured and nailed to a tree, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He descended into the earth to the place of death. On the third day he rose from the tomb. He ascended into heaven to be everywhere present throughout all ages, and his kingdom will come on earth. We believe in God within us, the Holy Spirit burning with Pentecostal fire, life-giving breath of the Church, spirit of healing and forgiveness, source of all resurrection and of eternal life. Amen. Alongside with the stir-up collect, last Sunday in one prayer book the lectionary included as its final reading for the church's year, John's account of the feeding of the 5,000. An interesting choice, uh, how we finish things is often um, very expressive, very significant and those who put together the lectionary in the prayer book felt that the feeding of the 5,000 was the right place to finish. A story of great thanksgiving and of great hope and a great assurance to prepare us again for the great season of Advent. Here is John's account in chapter 6. After this Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee which is the Sea of Tiberias and a multitude followed him because they saw the signs which he did on those who were diseased. Jesus went up on the mountain and there sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then and seeing that a multitude was coming to him, Jesus said to Philip, How are we to buy bread, so that these people may eat? This he said to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred denarii would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, there is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, in number about five thousand. Jesus then took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. And when they had eaten their fill, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, that nothing may be lost. So they, gathered, so they gathered them up, 
and filled twelve baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. When the people saw the sign we, which he had done, they said, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. One or two thoughts, if I may. Tremendously significant start. Jesus went up on the mountain and all those around, all those who saw this and those who would have later heard it would have been thinking Moses had gone up on the mountain and there sat down with his disciples. Now that was normally a sign that you would be teaching when the rabbi sat down and there were people there ready to listen to him. We hear in the Sermon on the Mount that Jesus went up the mountain and sat down. And again, this is another Mo Moses moment. So of course, Moses brings the law down from the mountain, but Moses had also in the wilderness, by the grace of God, had brought manna for the people. The people had been fed. Jesus said to Philip, how are we to buy bread so that these people may eat? Now Jesus knew the answer to this question, but sometimes God asks of us questions which he knows the answer to, but we do not know. But in being asked, we are stretched and tested and challenged. And it's a useful, if sometimes painful, learning time for us. If any of us are going through times when we are being asked questions that we don't yet know the answer to, then perhaps we can remember the example of Jesus asking Philip this question. Philip highlights uh, what a large multitude it is, how much it would cost to feed everybody. And then Andrew notices a child who has brought, who is offering bread and fish. And we note the, the, the teamwork in all this. The child is willing to offer, and Andrew notices he is willing to offer. And when any of us have gifts that perhaps we can bring to the table, then maybe we should be bringing them to the table. And if ever we, like Andrew, see someone else bring gifts, or be hesitant or thoughtful about offering gifts, then maybe we can be encouraging to them. Although Andrew isn't wholly encouraging, but what are they among so many? He knows that there is a gift, but he's not quite sure it's going to do any good. Jesus gets everybody to sit down. Nice little touch. Now there was much grass in the place. As if John is saying, Jesus is concerned about our comfort as well. Would he have made everybody sat down if it had just been a stony, a rocky place? Don't know, maybe I'm reading too much into that. But there was much grass in the place, so they sat down in number about 5,000. And then Jesus takes the loaves, just five, and when he had given thanks, he distributes them. So also the fish, just two, and distributes them. Jesus gives thanks for the loaves and the fish. He does not turn away and laugh uh, semi-mockingly. He doesn't say, this is no use at all. How can this be among so many? He, give, he gives thanks for them. I wonder if, as the little boy uh, offered his bread and fish, that adults around were smirking and were thinking he clearly doesn't understand the depth of the problem. Sometimes, perhaps uh, very sadly, we are inclined to smirk a little bit when someone else offers gifts which we think may not be much good. But Jesus gives thanks. Jesus always gives thanks when our gifts are offered. We may think they're very small, others may think they're very small, but Jesus is giving thanks. And if I may say with all due reverence, he and the angels are cheering us on. If you and I have gifts that we are called to offer, then may God give us grace to be like the little boy and offer them. And many people think, and it does seem very likely, that there is a foreshadowing of Holy Communion, the Eucharist, at this point. Jesus takes bread, gives thanks, breaks it, shares it. Whenever we are receiving the bread bread and wine of communion. Maybe we may think that this all ties in with Jesus sharing bread on the hillside, with also Jesus being 
a Moses figure, but one much greater than Moses. As much as they wanted. That's a wonderful, satisfying phrase of satisfaction. He distributed them the bread to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. Occasionally people may say, well, what happened here was a miracle of generosity and sharing, that when others saw the boy brought forth his, bring forth his gifts, uh, they got out their sandwiches as well and added them to the pile. I, I think I would be hesitant, to be honest, uh, to try and explain away the miraculous at this point. I'm not sure we need to, and I don't think there's any evidence that the Gospel writers uh, saw this anything else than as miraculous. And all four Gospel writers record this miracle. There is large significance here. Maybe again this is why it was chosen to, to round off the church's year of reading. Gather up the fragments left over that nothing may be lost. That's a very encouraging phrase for those of us who feel parts of our lives are a little bit broken. But when Christ is there, even the fragments are gathered up and nothing will be lost. So they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves. Why 12? Uh, possibly the uh, one of the numbers of completion, 12 tribes of Israel etc. And so this is the Christ who makes everything complete. We can't be, quite be sure about that interpretation, but it seems likely. When the people saw the sign which he had done, they said, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. This is the one, the long-awaited Messiah. The feeding of the 5,000 is well worth reflecting upon and everybody's role in it, the generosity of the child, the hesitant interest from Andrew, Philip being asked a question he couldn't answer, and above all, Christ, who gives thanks, receives, multiplies. This is the power of the Creator God at work. As much as they wanted, all had eaten their fill. Nothing is to be lost. Amen. And so to our final prayers. Through Christ, the firstborn of all creation, we pray for respect for the earth. Through Christ, Prince of Peace, we pray for peace for earth's peoples. Through Christ, King of Love, we pray for love in our lives. Through Christ, Lord of the Dance, we pray for delight in the good. Through Christ, divine healer, we pray for forgiveness for past wrongs. Through Christ, the morning star, we pray for the grace to make a new start for ourselves and for our world. May the road rise up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face. The rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Many blessings on your Advent Sunday and all that is to come. Amen. <laughs>